Okay, I'm going to change the final relay in the uh, 3562 tonight. Uh, the relay's turned out, it's a tiny little thing. Um, let me show you. It's a tiny little uh, reed relay, single, single pull, single throw. Uh, it's normally open. So let's get that done this evening. That's quite a straightforward repair. It's not quite the same as the original one. The original one's got um, four poles on it, uh, five, six poles actually, six connections. Um, let me just put my glasses on so I can see the thing. Okay. We've got the coil, uh, which is, uh, you can even see these really, depends if it's going to focus or not. Uh, the coil, we've got the two connections on their own, which is the coil. And you can see that, that's my side here, there and there. You've got the two uh, outer cores, connections here, which are the connections to the reed, which are normally open. And this connection here, on the end, is connected to a screen around the relay. Uh, on the original um, relay that came out, there's another connection there that's also connected to the screen, so it doesn't make any difference there at the same point anyway. That's going to go back in the, into the board, which comes out to the grounding position that we took out last night. Should pop that in. It's actually smaller than the uh, original one. It's slightly smaller, you can see there. Okay, solder that up. What I tend to do just to get these soldered, I'll just get a couple of the connections in on the ends. Okay, I can solder it up. So that's done that. Uh, I'll just give it a quick wipe off with some isopropanol. I've got a stiff brush somewhere. Buried on the bench somewhere. Right, we'll use this brush for the time being. So a bit of isopropanol. Just get rid of the flux that was on the board. Looks good. Most of the flux off. Right. Oops. Bring the uh, high points off on the They're actually okay, actually, they're no higher than the existing ones, so that should be that taken care of. Just left us with the screens now to pop back on. Now, there's a couple of adjustments in here that we're going to have to do at some point, so I'm going to have to probably put the board on the extender. These are the two offsets of the two differential amplifiers. This one's done on the negative side, and this was done on the positive side. And there's instructions to uh, to explain how to do that. I was actually having a look through um, eBay this morning for spares for this, not for any reason, just spare minute at work. I was browsing through, and I found um, service manuals 
uh, genuine HP service manuals because it comes in two sections for this, part A and part B. Uh, uh, so I've just bought those. Um, I think it'd be just a nice thing to have with the uh, with the analyzer. If I sell it, you know, it goes, comes with the ma uh, service manuals as well, which is also a nice uh, addition if someone's buying a bit of kit like this. I think it'd be nice to sell those with the unit. But the plan is to actually use this and try and uh, use it with maybe this audio analyzer, the 8903 audio analyzer and uh, do a bit of experimenting with amplifiers and things like that. So let's uh, these screws to start. Okay, that's that one. appear tight that's because they've got this blue Loctite on them so it's, uh, I'm not forcing the threads or anything horrendous. I must have been. Okay. Looks all right. That one screw is a bit tight actually, I don't know why that's so bloody tight. Let's just uh, wind that back out a bit. It wasn't quite seated. Wind that back out and put a dob of oil on it just to give it a hand. Okay, the screw's lined up correctly. Just, yeah, the screw's well lined up. Just put a little bit of oil on the screw thread. One of them was actually very tight to get out anyway, so it was probably that one. Try it again. Oh, good. Okay, so they're tight. Okay, just check the other ones that we did have off earlier on. So there you have it, that's the board for the uh, inputs for uh, one channel, uh, differential amplifier. Slide that back in the unit. that takes the, the analog signal into the DAC. Plug it into there, and that's in. Now there's a metal cage that goes over the top of all of these when they're finally, uh, when the units all put back together, but for the, the next step will be to um, have a look through the service manual and see if there's any calibration that they suggest you do. Um, I mean, it obviously works and it passes calibration, but whilst it's in this state, uh, I think it's worth also uh, just checking to make sure everything is sort of right. I was actually thinking last night after I'd changed that radio, I was thinking, oh god, did it actually need that A5 board that I replaced? So I uh, I plugged the A5 board in it, the old A5 board, and it came up with uh, a pass again. And I was thinking, oh, what a waste of money, you know, 150, 160 quid. No, it probably wasn't as much as that, but 120 quid for the board. Um, 
but when I actually delved into it deeper, it, it actually was failing. The A5 board was failing on the digital side, so there was definitely a problem with that A5 board, uh, and the, the other one did fix that. So that's good. It, I was a bit sort of, I was starting to wonder if it actually did need it, but it, it clearly did. There clearly was a fault with that board. Okay, so. That's the uh, unit back together. Uh, all I'm going to do now, as I say, is we're going to go through. I think there's some calibration. This is the digital source board. There's some adjustments in there that probably need checking. I did check some of the timings and they were slightly out, so I wanted to do that. But the analog source board here is the trigger board, and there's the two left channels so channel one and channel two. That's the uh, channel one's DAC. Channel 1's uh, preamplifiers, channel 2's deck, channel 2 preamplifiers, and then you've got various RAM boards and God knows what here. Um, does actually look like I've possibly got that not lined up properly either, so let me check that. that straps pulling the board over. But um, I think we're ready to, uh, yeah, as I say, ready to go through the calibration process just to check. Oh, it looks alright, the board's not actually bending over that way, I think. Um, so we're going to go over and do some calibration on it and uh, we'll start to use it and see what it's actually capable of. Thanks for watching. Okay, we're not totally out of the woods yet, even though it's passing the initial power-up calibration, every now and then it will fail the uh, zoom test. And that's caused, I found, by a high DC offset from the uh, Channels 2 preamplifier, the one that was damaged. Um, now, I've got the circuit diagram for that, it shouldn't be too hard to repair, but the problem is I'm getting it on a, an extender board, and I'll just show you the problem. If we go into service test, test input, front end adjust, and DC offset. You see channel 1's got a nice low DC offset, but you see channel 3's got this high DC offset. And I can clear that by, it's going to drop out actually in a minute, let me just get those test will drop out. Let me just go into do that again and I'll short the connection out. Um, so let's go um, offset adjust. I'm shorting out the input to the DAC and you see that it goes to zero. So I'm going to short it out properly. So there you go. Um, so there's a problem with that. Uh, that's just an offset adjustment. That could be an op amp that's gone. I've got bought some op amps for it anyway so that's not going to be a problem. Uh, I'm just going to try and adjust, make some adjustments and see if I can bring that in any further. If we look here at the, this test point here, which is test point 400, just in here. Get plates of meat out of the way. Here's test point 400. So we've got a minus 26 millivolt offset here, and this is the good amp. Same point, test point 400. And that's got a 1.9 millivolt positive offset. So, a high DC offset just here on this point here. I need to work out what that is. Now, it feeds through to this is a test point 402. This is before it goes through this switch. I'm expecting to see the same DC offset here. Um, it goes to a unity gain amplifier here or buffer. And then it's taking this signal here from this op amp. Now, I need to get this level, two and three, the same point, so this doesn't sit high or low, because this is all direct coupled. So the, this DC point here has to be the same, I'd expect, as test point, this test point here. Um, so I suppose what we could just have a look at is, we've got a, a, adjustments down here for offset and offset here. Now it does tell you to do it, it gives you a run through of how to do it, uh, but unfortunately you can't do it because I can't get it on the board. I need an extender board, um, and short of making one, which I could do as a last resort, I'm just going to have a bit of a twiddle. I'm making a note of what I'm doing to the board, so I can always put it back if it all goes well, it gets any worse. But there's a, this adjustment here. I think what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to adjust this. This will looks like bias this op amp here over and hopefully push this one more put this point po more positive uh, and maybe bring this down to a sort of a, a, low, a more sort of neutral or sort of nearer to naught volts that's what I need to do I need to get this DC offset level down 
um, just to see if we can find out what it is. Uh, it could be a faulty component here, but I mean, I did check the components in circuit and they all test fine. So I've got a feeling it could be a faulty op amp, maybe. Also, I couldn't check your amps, uh, but I've got some op amps, so it's not a problem. But I need to really find where the DC level is. Now, if you see here, I've marked up this was 2.5 millivolts here, to 2.1 to 2.5 millivolts. Um, so I expect that op amp to be working fairly well. Um, I did a measurement down here of 3.9 and I've adjusted that down to zero. But of course doing that has pushed this offset even further because if that's at 3.9 millivolts, this point here, and that's at 2.1, this point's going to go high. In theory, yeah, so that's interesting. No, it's going to go no, isn't it? Because that was originally 3.9 and I've dropped that back to zero. And this point here... Is that right? Yeah, it's 2.1 positive. I need to check the polarities of these, but it's going to push this op amp either one way or the other, assuming this op amp is using a, a plus or minus rail. Um, but certainly that's going to cause you know a DC offset shift on here. So let's have a look at test point 501. Uh, and then see what DC level we've got here. And it'll be interesting to compare it. We need to get that level or this level really down to, let's have a look at test point 402, get this level down to a, a close to zero as we can. Okay, that's test point 402, and we've got an offset of seven millivolts, so we need to try and bring that down. I'm gonna try and adjust, it's all over the place, it's actually running a calibration run at the moment, so let's wait for that to settle down. So we've got an eight, yeah, we've got an eight millivolt offset there. I need to get that down. So what I'm going to try and do that's minus eight millivolts. So if I bring this point higher, uh, we need to bring, we need to reduce this level, bring this level down. That should bring this level. Come on, let's think. If I increase that level, it brings it higher. So I increase this level, it'll bring that point down. But it's always negative already. So I need to bring this point more positive. Uh, to, yeah, bring it. Nope, I need to bring this point more negative to bring it more positive. Okay, so we'll have a twiddle with this pot here and uh, see what that does. Just running through sort of like the basic calibration. Unfortunately, it's not so straightforward to mount these balls on extenders. Um, I bought a ribbon cable um, and I thought I'd be able to use, use this because I thought it was wired straight. Uh, this is a floppy drive cable, I've just taken a couple of the connections off. But unfortunately, when you uh, pin one is transposed from one side to the other, so you can't use the board, it shorts the power supply out, so that's no good. Um, but what I'm doing at the moment is, I'm trying to work out, because Channel 2's still got a bit of a problem occasionally where it's got a, like a high DC offset. If you look at the scope here, you can see that this is a... Channel 2 here with DC coupled at, uh, let's go let's make them the same, 100 millivolts. Channel 2 is, is channel 2 of the DSA, channel 1 is channel 1 of the DSA, and channel 1 is correct. And you see that the DC offset here is uh, zero, which is uh, what you'd expect. Look at the circuit here, we've got um, the two um, amplifiers, and one I'm the way it tells you to do it is to go through a sort of sequence of um, shorting out various links and having to adjust it whilst it's off the board, but obviously I can't get access to the unit because I can't get um, a board extender to my make one, which I'm going to have to do, I think. But what the problem is, and I think there's actually a problem with something on the board, uh, and it shouldn't be that hard to find, I mean, there's not a lot on here, really. The problem is, if I... Let me just show you. You see the DC offset here. Well, what I've done is I've set these two uh, points here, these, this point here, this uh, input to this differential amplifier, and this input here. I've got these as, zero, as close to zero as I possibly can by adjusting these DC offset pots here. There's, there's two pots on the, uh, on the amplifiers. On the, uh, 
put as it's a differential amplifier there's one on the positive and one on the negative side if you see what I mean but I can never get this this point to stay low um, and it depends on attenuated levels and things so I'm getting a high DC somewhere um, and I've got a feeling maybe we've got a problem with one of the op amps uh, or maybe one of these current it looks like a current amplifier or something like that I'm not sure exactly sure what these these devices are doing I really hope it's none of these two because they're going to be very hard to sort so there's sort of like a these devices are usually temp temperature compensated when sort of in, in one um, one package together so it's like a it's like a six-legged transistor basically uh, but if you see here if I short the input on channel 2 See the level goes back to more or less zero, and if I remove it, I do it that time. It's interesting. So that's useful information. When the range changes, we get an offset. So every time it changes the range, it it, all, it changes the offset. Now the range changing is all done through this pop down here, uh, and the sh these shift registers here, and also we've got this these. Uh, uh, common mode rejection DAC, whatever that's doing, of the rejection, rejecting common no mode noise. We've got these JFETs here that sort of switched by the uh, shift registers, but something here is not working right. Uh, because this offset's moving, I basically was sure that these points are staying stable, but this point is not. This is shifting, and any DC change in this point here relative to this point here would cause the uh, offset to shift. So I'm starting to wonder now, is there a problem with this op amp? Because I don't know, something's changing. I suppose it wouldn't be the op amp because it's basically doing what it's being told to do. You know, if you shift this point positive, the, the output's going to go positive. If you shift that point positive, it's going to go negative. So I'm starting to look round, maybe something to do with one of these shift registers of blown up I don't know um, so the next point possibly is to look at the two uh, two test points maybe on the scope and compare them between the two channels and see what happens because I'd expect if this point here is moving we've got 6k here and a 5k here you'd see some shift on this point here um, which is what it looks like it's meant to do but uh, at the moment the unit works, and I'm just trying to get this calibration point sorted out um, to get this a bit better. But um, I think we need to have a look through and see what we can find. I'm just running through the calibration on the DAC board. Uh, this basically adjusts the offsets of the, the uh, DAC to uh, take the input from the um, analog input board. This is the input connection here, and basically, we're feeding in a, at the present point, we're feeding in an 800 hertz signal. And we look at the waveform the scope here, we've got a lot of filtering and averaging on. This is our uh, injected signal. The clean triangle here is our injected signal, which is a, uh, the 200 hertz, uh, um, 800 millivolts peak to peak. Now, the idea is we um, adjust these pots here to numb out the uh, response. So what I'm looking for, and I've made an adjustment already, uh, uh, what I'm looking for is this triangle to uh, basically be as flat as possible and centered in the screen so we've DC coupled and our 0 volt points are at the same position so we want a flat square waveform right in the center of the line like that so we need a nice clean waveform um, I've done the first part of the uh, calibration which was a bit fiddly it takes a bit of then I realized my scope was on times 10 I couldn't get the calibration correct but this is what you adjust first this is the R 401 and this should flatten off the waveform okay go too far quite, quite close to the full extent of the range and then the other adjustment here positions it with the basic like the bias is it DC offset uh, get the epoxy thing to connect get the tool in So that shifts our DC point there, so you can see that's our DC offset control. That needs to be set just there. So that's balanced the 
that should have balanced the output. So what I'm going to, what I tend to do, just for my own peace of mind, I tend to go back and just check all our settings. So I've basically done this morning what I've been messing around in the workshop is the um, this adjustment here, uh, AC offset and reference adjustment. Uh, that was straightforward enough once I sussed out I was on times 10. Uh, that was an easy enough adjustment to make. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, we're, this is the point we're doing now, adjusting these uh, reference points to hopefully remove the DC offset that seems to be present on channel 2. Now, so obviously this is the channel 2's back uh, and it will always stay as channel 2's back. They're basically a pair. Once you calibrate them it does say you can't swap boards over because this is calibrated to this slot basically, um, don't shift the things around. Um, and it's also important to really read the kit very carefully. When it says setting up about the scopes, don't think, oh yeah, I know what to do, I'll do that when I've, when I've got it running. Because I miss things like, for a start it says, you know, you've got to have DC coupling on. Uh, you could catch, forget that and uh, be thinking, why can't I get this in the right position? Then you realise you're AC coupled, it, it just doesn't shift position, obviously. Um, so this point's going seems to be going fairly well. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, finish off this adjustment and then just run the self cal on it again, and see what it comes up with. I've just uh, performed the calibration on the uh, source output. Um, a pretty straightforward adjustment. Uh, all it requires really is a DC offset calibration and uh, the level adjustment. Um, I've also connected up to the uh, Hewlett Packard generator. Um, analyzer, audio analyzer, and found it's actually very low distortion. Um, very good clean quality output. I'll demonstrate that now. Um, so basically we select our source by collecting, pressing the source button here, and it gives us this menu here. We're ignoring the screen at the moment because that's irrelevant. I'm not feeding anything into the analyzer. So we select source level, and you see here that this is our option. So we want, so let's put one volt. So that's one volt peak. Okay. And then we need to select our frequency, so I'm going to go for fixed sign, and I'm going to enter our frequency you want. Let's go for one kilohertz, and that will be producing a one kilohertz uh, sonicidal waveform from the source. We connected it up to the uh, HP um, 34401 uh, DVM, and you can see we got 0 0.707, which is uh, exactly one volt RMS. Uh, one volt peak, peak uh, sorry, let's get this right, so this is not showing, I put a one volt peak, not, yeah, zero to peak, so it's connected up to, connected up to the uh, Agilent uh, DVM and you see 0 0.707 because um, the output of the generator is uh, peak, not peak to peak, so this is the uh, the RMS level, and you see here 0 0.707, which is correct. Um, we see the frequency here is one kilohertz, which also shows that it's uh, spot on actually, because this is uh, certainly at low frequencies, it's very accurate. I connect it up to the um, audio analyzer here, um, and we see here same level um, 0 0.707 RMS. So if I put this Increase the generator's output to source level 1.414. That should be about a volt. Okay, it's fraction, showing fractionally high. Um, but let's have a look at the distortion. And you see the distortion is 0.3%. So it's uh, pretty good. So have a bit, a bit of filtering on it, probably drop it down a little bit lower. Yeah, 0.3%. So that's a pretty good, pretty good low level distortion for a, uh, something like this. So it looks like that's working quite well. Let's just try a different frequency. The uh, the audio analyzer will only go up to 100 kilohertz anyway, which is I think the maximum this generator will put out. So let's try a uh, different uh, frequency. So let's try uh, 50 kilohertz. Can you see yep, 50 kilohertz? The distortion's gone up slightly. Uh, the AC level is has dropped back slightly. Oh, I've got the filter on. I'll turn the filter off. So yeah, you see that there's a slight roll off in the frequency response, but um, looks pretty good. Uh, still just under a just under a volt RMS. So the um, obviously the source function of it's working perfectly. Um, 
and I have done a bit of calibration on the. Uh, I've done the DAX last night, and they uh, seem to be perfectly calibrated. The instructions in the manual are awful. They really don't explain what you're supposed to do, and it's a bit of trial and error. But I have actually managed to get the uh, the DAX to pass, and I haven't got this intermittent uh, calibration error I was getting. You saw in the previous video that uh, it passed straight away, or the uh, live video I did, it passed straight away. Um, but that was a bit intermittent. Sometimes it would, sometimes it wouldn't. And all that was was adjustment to the, well, it looks like an adjustment to the DAC. Um, because it, at the moment, everything's been okay. Uh, what I need to do tomorrow, I've got some uh, ribbon cables I've made up to ex extend the board. Where are they? Somewhere can't find them at the moment. I've made some extendable boards uh, so I can actually make adjustments to the unit and uh, don't have to sort of try and adjust something, put it back in the slot, adjust it, put it back in the slot. So that's uh, that's that's a lot easier to do that. The problem is I was using an IDE cable because it's the right amount of pins but it actually transfers, pin one is, if, is in one row, it transfers it transfers it to the other row with, on a, an IDE cable so it's not sort of like pin for pin so I had to rewire the uh, connector but that seems to have worked fine and I've managed to get the DAX adjusted correctly uh, and now I'm just waiting for the uh, the 30 I think it's a 30 way connector yeah 30 way connector and it's coming tomorrow which will also need to be modified and I can remove the DC offset on channel 2 if you look at channel 2 um, this is high DC offset now this, this channel 2 is good channel 1 is good but whatever I do I can't seem to get that level much down below that now it could be an op amp that's a bit leaky uh, so it might require a new op amp but uh, it still doesn't seem to affect the calibration it seems to pass but it does apparently affect the very low ultra low frequency response which to be honest with you it doesn't matter to me uh, I'm probably not going to use it for an awful lot of things like that anyway. Let's just quickly have a run through, see what it does whilst we're uh, here. So um, basically, yeah, you've got your source output here and your input on either channel one or channel two. I'm, only, I'm still sort of getting my head around this, so bear with me. Um, so for example, if I want to select a source, I've got an option of source options here. I've got random noise, uh, burst, random, uh, periodic chirp, burst, chirp, uh, container source off, uh, and then we've got fixed sign, which I'm presently running at the moment, and you can see 50 kilohertz. Uh, we can adjust the DC offset, so we can push the, the obviously the sine wave positive and negative. Source level, let's set that to one volt. It's just a nice, clean, easy thing. And we can see the... Uh, unit trying to find a range, auto ranging uh, and for example here, and there's all different measurement windows but uh, I'm, I'm bear in mind I'm still getting my head around this but I've had to be a bit, of, a bit of a fiddle around with it so we go frequency we go centre frequency of 50 kilohertz we should be able to get the display back by pressing one of these buttons where is it? that one I think The frequency 50 kilohertz. Okay, start. Bear with me. <laughs> it's always a way, isn't it, when you're trying to demonstrate something, it, it won't work uh, how you think it will. So, fixed sign 50 kilohertz, source level 1 volt peak to peak. It's producing output, it's connected up. Um, Centre frequency 50 kilohertz. Um, frequency span. Oh, okay, we've got a full frequency span. Let's try one. Let's try 10 hertz. That looking better. There's our. Uh, see, it's gone off the scale, so which is what you'd expect with a frequency span that wide. Frequency span. Uh, let's go for one kilohertz then. Filling time record. Off the scale for some reason. Are we on auto ranging. Range. 
Yeah, it should be auto ranging. Here we go. Oh, what's it doing? Clearly haven't got a clue what I'm doing here, have I? Measure mode, linear, that's what I had before. It's going to take me a while to get the hang of how this thing works. Press the reset button, that always works. Do a reset, come back again and try again. So, source, source level. Let's go 100 millivolts, fixed sign, 1 kilohertz, frequency, center frequency, 1 kilohertz. There we go. There's our center frequency here, as you see. Uh, let's reduce span. Uh, 100 hertz. You see it's filling the time records and then we can select our marker here. And it's basically, what well, all this basically is, is a, a, a spectrum analyzer with phosphorus analyzing on it. So it's a uh, it's basically the same controls as a, uh, as a, um, as I say, as a, a spectrum analyzer. So that's our uh, Y marker. There's our X marker and our little pip. And then we can actually select pip modes here. Uh, so pip to peak, and you can see even though the display is not that sharp, center frequency here is one kilohertz at 23.0 db volts so from my initial sort of fiddling about with it it looks like it's working okay um, there's lots of features on here that are never going to get used I mean this this machine is never going to get used a lot anyway it this was really as a can I fix it uh, will it will it is it fixable um, the display is going to be probably the thing that will uh, shorten its life I don't know how much longer this display is going to hold up and um, you can tell from the video but it's like a it's not pin sharp. Uh, it's not as sharp as the spectrum analyzer I've got. It's sort of like low emission, and uh, unfortunately, a replacement screen's three hundred pounds plus about a hundred quid uh, once you paid all the custom and excise duties. So it's not viable, really. Unfortunately, uh, unless I can uh, get one over here cheaper. Uh, but it all works, it also gives you split display, so you can have channel one and channel two in the separate display, so that's nice. But hopefully once we've got it fully calibrated, I'll, I'll uh, do a, a frequency response and a couple of amplifiers, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what we get. And hopefully we'll be able to print it out and uh, get some results. Right, I'm trying to do the final part and the bit that's causing the problem on the calibration of this... Uh, input board. This is the A35 board, channel 2's input board. This is the board that's got the uh, high offset on it. Um, so I'm carrying out procedure on uh, paragraph, uh, paragraph 3 section 20, or 3 slash 20, uh, input DC offset adjustment. I built an expander board. Uh, first of all I did try and use a, uh, a flexi, um, you know, like a, a floppy cable. This is the 30 uh, pin connector. Um, and I managed to track down, as I said on the previous video, a 30 pin connector. But the problem is, because the way it's wired, it's, uh, it transfers the pin 1's bank to the second, to the other pin over on the other side. So it, it transposes the pins, and there's no way of getting it to transpose the right pin. So it doesn't, basically doesn't go from pin 1 to pin 1, it goes from pin 1 to pin oh, 16, I suppose it is, the adjacent channel, the adjacent pin. So I made this thing up, which is all a bit precarious, uh, out of uh, the existing part of the, the D-type and uh, a mating half, and it's wedged there and it's sort of floating in space at the moment. It's all a bit precarious. But I'm going to attempt to set this um, adjustment up uh, and hopefully show you what I'm doing. These are the adjustments here. I've got two trim pots here. Um, there's, um, there's also a couple of capacitors here, which are basically roll-off response adjustments. I'm not going to fiddle with those. Uh, there's no reason why they should be out of adjustment. Nothing's been changed on this board, but I need to see if I can get these off uh, amps to uh, offset correctly. 
um, it seems to me when I'm adjusting the uh, attenuator it's altering the, the DC offset and the attenuator is where are we not on that circuit because that's the wrong circuit let's try to find a circuit for you uh, no I can't find the circuit I mean, basically what it is is a the final stage is a, a it's got a couple of uh, times five amplifiers and an attenuated circuit. And the less attenuation you have, the more offset you have. So basically, these are the two balanced amplifiers. This is the negative side, that's the positive side. And there's a procedure for setting those up to get zero offset. And we'll, I'll show you that on the, uh, on the screen in a moment. So I'm going to go through. It says disconnect the power line, la 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 la. la. Uh, remove the ADC of the same channel, which I've done, and ground out test point 400. That's, that's on. Um, Short all three pins of J300, that's that connector up there, that's the input connector. Let's zoom in a bit so you can see. That connects that little orange connector between the two um, shielded cages, that's the input connector. Uh, and I'm going to short all those together. I made up a little lead. It's handily enough, it's the same as the, the fan lead out of a computer, so I just shorted all those together. So it's a short all three pins together uh, and join it to test point 501. Since the centre pin of this, is connected to ground, this ground, the inputs of test point 501. So basically, I'm going to put everything together and then connect that to test point 501. So let's do that now. I have to be a bit careful with, as I say, it's a bit precariously balanced. I don't want to put any strain on those connectors. So that's, that's, that's the ground made. Let's get a uh, one of my chinky, horrible, bloody Chinese. Uh, mini grabbers uh, and just hope that this one's designed going to be zero ohms and not not sort of some stupid resistance so I need to ground that to test point was that 501 yep so if I test point 501 we'll quick look for it I should know this board off by heart by now that's test point 501 so what's this doing is grounding the negative side of the amplifier from, from memory so that's test point 501's grounded okay um, and now I've got to uh, range, set the range to minus 51 dBm. Or dBv, sorry. Uh, input coupling to DC. That's on DC anyway. Uh, turn, it, turn the X marker at 3% to the largest magnitude. It should be zero. Is. And it's jumping around a bit actually. Me uh, select uh, measurement display, power spec 2. Because that's, that's on. Just A33. Oh, this is A33, so. Am I actually looking in channel 1? That's the question. How do I select the input? Well, let's have a twiddle with that and see if that makes any difference. So let's get a pop twiddler. Checking to make sure that I have to select the right channel. Let's have a look. Let's move this round so you can see what's going on. So, what I'm looking to do is get this dot here on the this reference dot here as low as possible. That's the plan. So I'm going to adjust. Uh, 33. Yeah, so it should be less than minus 85 dB. So let's try that now. So R212. So I'm adjusting the positive side. It's going up. Going down. Down. Yeah, it's going back up again, so I need to take it slowly. Slowly winding it in, slowly, slowly, very jumpy actually. 
Mm. You have a lot of noise. Just turn this interior light off. And see that. So, where are we down to now? Oh, at minus 80. At minus 86, that's good. So let's go a little bit further. So we can get it a bit down, a bit, a bit lower. And then some more weight. Yeah, it's as low as I'm going to get it. Seems like the pot's a bit noisy actually. Let's give it a twiddle. Unfortunately, it's a multi turn pot and you can't get pot cleaner in it. So I cut that's as low as I can get it. That's good. That's as low as I can get. That's a minus 86, 87, 90. So that's uh, well within spec. Right, what we've got to do now, remove the grounding link from A. So that's I'm just doing an auto cal. This unit does an automatic calibration every, every now and then. You can disable that, but uh, by default it will do automatic calibration. Okay, remove the ground and link later on. Adjust R112 as described in step 7. So once it's finished calibration, you can't see it on the side of the screen. I don't think you can see it's running an auto cal at the moment. Okay, it's finished. Uh, Right, the other pots we're going to adjust uh, R112 for the same thing, and that, in theory, should remove our offsets. Are we running? Right, this could be where the problem lies. It looks like I can't bring this offset down on this negative side. So that means one of the op amps is probably packed up. It's just going full extent to both sides. Not getting any alteration at all there, are we? It's not moving. And I was suspicious that, you know, why this channel suit should be so badly out. So we've got an op-amp failure by the looks of it. Uh, now what we can do is what we need to, as we got it on extender board, so let me just show you what I've done. This was the, uh, the first one I adjusted, sorry this pot here, and that's got our positive side into spec, but our negative you see is hard over still. Where are we? Look at the right place. So we still, we need to bring that marker still down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find out I'm just making sure I'm adjusting the right place. R112, that's the adjustment I'm making. R112. Try and bring that down. Uh, yeah, I'm just checking and make sure I haven't done anything else stupid. Yeah, so there's, there's a problem with the offset on that side of the channel. So what I need to do now is probably remove this cover and find out which op amp's hard over. Right, for some reason we can't seem to get, when we're calibrating the negative side, we can't get that power indication to read uh, below minus 85 dB. We can't even get it to move, it's stuck high all the time. Now, we've done the high side, and that involves shorting out the input here, which is this connection here. And what that does is it allows us to uh, set the zero offset at uh, test point I think it's test point. This test point here. Okay, so we anyway we followed the instructions. We got no, we got a low offset there, and we saw that the power indication went down to zero. Then it tells you to remove the short from the input, um, and then adjust this resistor here to get the offset down. And it should do the same thing as it did on the previous test. The power that the bar should show, you know, down to minus eighty five dBm, dBv, dBm, whatever it is. DBW, I don't know what it is, DB, um, made no difference at all. So the first thing you think is, well, there's a high offset on the preamplifiers, and you see it's pulling these preamps about. 
So after I got it to, uh, I took it apart and checked the voltages here, and I can swing this as from plus 10, plus 100 millivolts to minus 100 millivolts. So I've got a full swing there. I can go negative and positive. Uh, likewise, here at this test point, past hit this resistor here into this op amp. Same thing. Got a good swing there. Same here. Same here. And I'm thinking, well, why? If I'm getting this to go negative and positive, why can't I get that instrument to? Why can't I get that indication to move? I'm thinking that's the output. And then I saw this point here. Now I'm not sure what this is. I need to sort of look into this. But this is the output from the negative amplifier that we're having problems with. And you see here, it not only does it feed off to this op amp here and down out to this analog side. It's also feeding to this. What looks like um, what is this? It's a negative. It's a comparator, is it? It looks like some sort of comparator circuit. Um, and then it comes through this other chip, this U502, and it goes to CDVLDL1, whatever that is. Oh, on the A32 and the A34 board. Um, so the A32 and the A31 are the DAC controllers. So I'm thinking possibly there's something wrong going on here. Uh, there's a, a levels wrong here. Uh, there's not a lot to go wrong. It's either this this U507, which is probably some strange uh, HP number. I need to check. Or this uh, this is an is this an uh, logic symbols are never good. Is that lat an AND gate? AND gate. I'm sure someone will tell me. And that feeds off to that uh, comparator. And I think what that's doing. Is telling the uh, telling the DAC controller that it's uh, on the negative or the positive side. Not sure, but um, it seems strange that I can get adjustments perfectly well on the high side, uh, and you you know you get the positive and negative swing, and you get exactly what you'd expect to see. And it goes high, and it comes down down as it gets to zero, and it starts to go high as it goes negative. But whatever I do on this side, it make, makes no difference at all. And also, if I adjust this too far, I get a calibration error. So, um, and that's basically, I think, because it's putting such a high offset on the output. So what I need to do is uh, try and work out what this chip is, I think. Uh, I wonder if this chip's got damaged or it's failed or whatever it, whatever it does. I need to know what it does. We've got this common mode rejection DAC here. Um, and that basically looks like it puts some sort of filtering circuit into this op amp. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, again, uh, a bit flaky with stuff like this. But... Um, I'm interested in this point here now. Now I can get a replacement um, DAC board for these. Oh, no, 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 sorry, my mistake. No, the DAC boards are fine. I swap the DAC boards. We know that's nothing wrong with it. I can't replace these preamplifiers. They they aren't available. So I'd I'd be I'm be intrigued to change, find these two devices and try and work out what they're doing. They've got a. It's, it's dinner's ready. The positive and, and negative supply there, and the other side of the ground. So they they look like a comparator, um, and they maybe just change your state here. So I might have a look at this on the scope actually, as uh, we can get this get access to this point quite easily. Uh, have a look at it on the scope and see if uh, we can work out what it is. But I think it's possibly the fault is around here. Okay, I've sussed it out. Oh, it's my mistake. It wasn't reading the instructions properly as usual. Um, these are the adjustments then. Uh, the board's on its uh, stand. The first adjustment you make is with the connector J300 shorted out. Uh, you program it to minus 51 dBm uh, and then you select the channel you want so you can read it. Uh, DC coupled. This is the point we want to get the lowest here. Um, so what I'm going to do is from just the positive side to get the lowest figure I can get here. So just bear with me, this is R212. Okay, and I'll get it as low as possible. It's pretty low. Then you disconnect the link from uh, the test point 501. And you adjust the negative side of the amplifier for the same thing. Very touchy control this.
It's actually really susceptible to noise, actually. Okay, so that's the best I'm going to get it. So that concludes that uh, second channel. Um, so that second channel should be perfectly aligned now. So what I'm going to do is going to put that back into the unit and I'm just going to clarify that the uh, first channel's offsets are right. Might as well do them all whilst I've got the board. Funny enough, the extender board, when I was using it, I suddenly realised I, I was short of two pins, especially a 30-pin connector, uh, and I'd only got 28 pins on there. Uh, but luckily, the pins that I've just moved it off to one side, and it just means that the 15-volt rail hasn't got two connections going to the board. So <laughs> that was a bit of luck, really. So I was still, still able to use it, even though it's not right. Um, that's working properly now, so I'm going to power it down, and we'll... Um, Move on to the next one. Oh. Who wants to start a calibration when you've got your finger on the button?